All right, boys and girls. So today's video, we're going to be concentrating all about washing, prepping before we even start on the kit. Now, one of the things I want to say is I have certain steps that I end up doing. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily right, but that's what I end up doing. As you can see, one of the things that you want to pay attention to when you're cleaning is a lot of times that there ends up being a mold release all over the, the piece to get it out of the mold. And then sometimes you actually get pieces of mold in these panel lines. If you have a figure kit, it'll be in the strands of hair. It happens. It sucks for the people after you because they don't end up getting that. So my first step is usually inspecting the piece, looking for anything that ends up being in the panel lines or if it's a figure kit, sometimes in the washing it. What I end up doing is the first wash I do in purple power. And after this section, I'll have a small demonstration in the work sink, um, just showing you my process on that. But I wear, wash in purple power or super clean. They're both pretty much the same. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them at Walmart, and I think a couple other places. There will be links as usual down below to be able to pick them up. Have them delivered right to your home. I end up washing it in the purple power. Then I end up washing it in new warm water to rinse off the purple power. And then I end up washing in like Dawn dishwashing soap to make sure that I have all the residue from the purple power and any left residue off and so that the piece is nice and clean. I know I'll end up saying it again because, well, I've already filmed that part and now I'm filming this part. Lay out the part, let it dry for at least 24 hours because sometimes there'll be uh, water that depends on the resin. Some resin, some companies is more porous and it can absorb some of the chemical and or water. So you wanna make sure and let it dry. I've seen people do videos and there'll be a separate video on how to fix warp pieces, uh, but don't, don't put it in boiling hot water when you're soaking it, things like that, because that can cause it to warp. Um, don't put it in boiling water to try and straighten it out because that's just gonna make it worse and turn it into a goo. I'll make a video a little bit later on on how to fix warp pieces uh, the correct way so that you don't end up with any nightmares because I've had a few and I don't want you to go through the same thing. Lay them out to dry and do not, if you have broken pieces or you're doing putty work, things like that, do not later on rewash in the Purple Power. Uh, purple Power or the Super Clean is super strong. It will eat the glue, whether it be a super glue or epoxy, and those parts will fall apart. It's also really good if you have pieces that you want to strip the paint off of. Even if it's lacquer, you soak it in there for a few days and that paint will lift right off. So yeah, just keep that in mind. So without further ado, let's jump to the sink and then we will come back and I will give you my final thoughts and outros. All right, boys and girls. So here we are with my prep. Uh, generally what I end up doing is I put the piece in the purple power. And as you can see, the water, I know it's not super bright. My kitchen is not the best well lit. Um, so I put the piece in. This one's already been washed, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Now, I know that there have been people that put out videos uh, sticking their hand in purple power without any gloves on and without any care. I cannot recommend that. And I cannot stress enough, put on some kind of glove. If you don't, Keep in mind, trying to get these apart. So these are tins from um, Mr. Color, I believe. And they used to be kind of chromed and Purple Power actually will eat metal, okay? So as you can see, these are dull, they're no longer shiny and they've lost that luster and everything. And that's because, well, I let them soak in here for probably about a week because they had really dried on paint. And it wasn't even like lacquer paint. It was just acrylic paint that was really stuck on the tins from painting minis. So like I said, I cannot stress enough, make sure and wear a glove when you're sticking your hand in here because the chemicals that are in here, they are strong degreasers, uh, whether it's this, or I'll put a link to the other one. I always forget the name of it. It's a good alternative for this. But uh, yeah, so it, it actually leaches the oils out of your skin. And within, I don't know, a minute of this being on your skin, it gives you that pruny uh, texture from the moisture being sucked out of your skin, um, like being in a pool for a really long time. So again, I cannot stress enough, do not put your hands directly in here. So, 
Um, with a toothbrush, you want to just make sure and scrub around all the panel lines, everything else. I usually do that with this while it's in there. And then what I will do is once this is all done and washed, I will rinse it and let's get this out of the way. I will rinse it under warm water and then I will wash it in a container with warm soapy water. And what I prefer to use is something like Dawn, Dawn Ultra. You can just get in the grocery store. You do not have to let it soak. You just put it in there. The reason that you do not want to wash uh, resin with hot water is because it will cause it to warp. So like I said, go through the same process that you did when washing it under the warm water, just to make sure to get all of the degreaser off because that can be as bad as the demolding agent. Make sure and get in all the panel lines and everything, get it all out. And if you wash it in warm water, just laying it out flat to dry will be fine. Also keep in mind that resin is very porous. So some resins, depending on the manufacturer, can absorb whatever the liquid is that you're dipping it into. So if you are dipping it into, say, Purple Power for a few days to strip off um, paint that's on here, just... Uh, make sure and let it sit out in this. You don't have to let it sit out in the sun, but sit outside or in a warm environment for several days. That way, any moisture that may have gotten absorbed by the resin will evaporate. All right, so here we are back again, and uh, I'm trying something new with this video. Let me know what you guys think. I am using the Rode Mic Go with the DJI Osmo Pocket. That's why you can see, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's tracking me. I kind of like it. I don't have any of the backlights on or anything because, well, it's kind of late with me shooting this video. I still have to edit it and put it up. So yeah, this is a test all the way around, seeing how this ends up working. That way I know I'm always in focus. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it made it clear for you guys. I want to um, make this whole series very comprehensive and beginning to start how to sand, how to clean out uh, the lines, how to mount things, how to customize your resin, how to everything. Um, due to your feedback as you guys, the viewer, you have indicated that you really want to see more resin. Um, I even had a shout out from uh, It's a Gundam slash It's a Gunpla um, saying that I don't put out enough video and content. And especially since I'm pretty much the only one that puts out English speaking videos and the infinite dimensions and showing you guys, uh, you know, the scripts because their instructions are pretty crappy, uh, to be honest. And I've said that in my own unboxings and my own videos. So I will be still be putting up some reviews of products, mostly because they've been sent to me to review for free. And then I'll probably have giveaways and come closer to the holidays. My videos are right now, I'm going to concentrate on at least one resin video a week, and I'm going to try and do a live stream, but that's going to be kind of sporadic up until October 19th. That's when I get married. And then after that, it'll go back into regular cycles where I can put up more videos each week. And then uh, up until December when I take my honeymoon. Again, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. There will be links down below for the items that I end up using for working on resin and for cleaning the resin. Again, I can't stress enough. I have seen several videos from people and I'm not naming anybody, but uh, there's been several people that I've seen use super clean or purple power and they're just getting their hands in there. Don't guys, just don't. Uh, trust me, I, I don't know if it's going to focus on it. It's probably not because my head's in there. There, it's focusing on there. I have permanent damage from on my cuticles and stuff from working with chemicals between when I worked in optical and then getting my hands in these in these products themselves without wearing proper protection while washing. And it has permanently jacked up my cuticles and I don't want that to happen to you. So um, again, wear gloves, any kind, latex, uh, the synthetics, whatever you can get your hands on when you're washing these, mostly when you're using the chemicals like Purple Power and stuff like that. I cannot stress that enough. Um, sanding and stuff, 
you can wet sand, you can rinse your hands off every once in a while. I haven't really had that much issue as far as with the resin residue on my hands. I will leave that up to you. Uh, personally, myself, when I'm sanding, I like to be able to run my fingers over the piece, feel the texture. You can feel little divots that maybe you don't end up seeing. But I also go around things a little bit differently. A lot of people will prime their pieces and then sand and everything. I do a majority of my sanding before priming because priming adds a layer of paint on there, which in some cases actually models some of the detail and then you're sanding and then you're putting another coat of primer and then you're putting your regular paints on there. And each one of those is a layer. And honestly, you want to keep the layers as minimal as possible to keep the details as crisp as possible. So I hope I made that clear. If you like this video, make sure and click the like button right down there. I think I forgot how this ends up flipping around, but click the like button, click the subscribe button. Um, I'll leave a comment down below if there are certain things or tutorials that you want to see on working on resin on as far as the pauldron. Um, we're going to be showing you different styles of uh, putting, making rivets and then doing out the panel line, scraping that all up and maybe adding some other details, fixing some blemishes that are on there. And I keep glancing down at it so I don't forget. Uh, removing sound, seam lines, gaps, all of that good stuff. I will see you guys all in the next video. As usual, YouTube, peace out.